Hello, and welcome to the Stuff Video Podcast. Here's what we've got coming up in today's iPhone-tastic show. Well, first up, apparently there was some sort of new gadget, something like a USB key or something, came out of some small city called San Francisco. You, you, yeah, were, yeah. you were there, Tom? That's or? right, yeah. I was there for the launch of the iPhone. Cisco Systems VoIP handset. <laughs> uh, no, I was there when Apple launched its iPhone, uh, what has to be the coolest gadget I've seen in my seven years as a gadget journalist. It really is awesome. Um, I can't express how much. If you saw the, uh, po uh, the video podcast a few weeks ago, you'll have seen my report from CES, but you'll also know that we are nine months away from the iPhone in the UK and six months away in the US. Unfortunately, you can't get your hands on one now. No matter, not even we can get our hands on one at the moment. Well, we say that, but... We can. You see, through the power of paper, we can teach you how to build your own iPhone in true Blue Peter style. We're gonna, you'll need a washing up bottle, uh, an empty cereal packet. Some, uh, some toilet roll, the inside of the toilet rolls. And some empty egg packets as well. You'll need none of these things. All you'll need is an internet connection. So you can go to the stuff.tv website. Now the chances are you're already on that. In which case, just look above you and uh, you'll, see, you'll see a blogs tab. Click on the blogs tab. Not now, because I'm talking. Uh, in a minute, click on the blogs tab. Then future stuff, that's my blog. And you'll be able to download a PDF from there, which will give you this. Ta -da. Here we go. This is a, uh, a plan for making your own iPhone. Um, I must admit, I didn't actually make this up. This was from Ready Mech, who, uh, who are, uh, have all sorts of origami on their site. Um, this, I think, is the coolest, though. Um, it's really very simple to do. You just follow their outline. Um, cut it up. Thank you, my beautiful assistant helping me out here. Um, now. As you can see, um, I'm not very good with a pair of scissors, so you better watch yourself, uh, Adam. Yeah, that, that's my finger, dude. Okay, well, <laughs> you get the idea. You cut this out and um, using some glue or double-sided sticky tape, uh, you can stick down the flaps, down here and across here, fold it all together, and yes, here's one we made earlier. This is the iPhone. As you can see, it's a pretty good <laughs> representation. This is actual size. Um, you can use it uh, as you would an iPhone with its touch sensitive display. Bit of imagination is needed, but <laughs> the fact is, it's as close as you're gonna get. Nice and thin, pretty good. Now, at the moment, that's not hugely useful, but if you're lucky enough to have a slim mobile, such as a very tasteful Dolce & Gabbana Razor, Limited edition. Limited edition. You can hide its uh, very, very tasteful uh, exterior within the iPhone. And suddenly your iPhone is working. Now, if you use a Bluetooth headset and can therefore control the Motorola, you don't need to take it out. Nobody needs to know that this isn't a real iPhone. If you're in a really, really dark club with lots of dry ice and all your friends are absolutely tanked, they might actually believe that you know Steve Jobs and he gave you an iPhone. Now, but what about iPod, iPod functionality? I know you're going to ask me this because obviously that's one of the killer features of the iPhone. Well, don't worry because there's still just about enough space in this box to take an iPod shuffle and just slide it in there. Now, it's not the most <laughs> elegant of solutions, but there you go. You have a music playing phone where you can, well, you can't really browse the web, but you can just say you're out of range. Um, I'd say it's a pretty good stopgap stop measure, wouldn't you? It's something to do in between being an OCD sufferer and constantly checking your Google alerts on Apple iPhone. Exactly. Well, uh, coming up, we're going to put this new iPhone up against its hottest contender. So, now we have the iPhone versus the other most eagerly anticipated phone of the year, the Nokia N95. 
Um, now, th this is usually the 43 second cell, this feature, where we pit two gadgets of the week against each other. These two are so important, though, that we're going to give them 47 seconds. That's a whole four seconds of extra footage of us talking about these devices because they're so packed with features. Like the cardboard iPhone. Tom, would you like to give me 47 seconds on why it's so damn great? I, I absolutely would, yes. Um, this, as you can see, is the Apple iPhone. It's one of the most remarkable bits of technological development in the history of humankind. As you can see, this whole front area is a screen and it changes depending on what function you're using. And it's touch sensitive, but not kind of stylus touch sensitive. You use your fingers. So if I click on, say, SMS here, I'll get a picture of all my last SMS conversations presented in a kind of eye chat style with, with bubbles coming out of people's mouths. That's great. But when it gets really exciting is when you do something like click on Maps here. And as you can see, the screen updates with an amazing bit of animation. OK, it's not actually doing it, but it will do. Um, it, once you're on Maps, you can choose, it uses Google Maps downloaded via its uh, GPRS or Wi-Fi connection. You can move around using your finger. And the coolest thing is you can zoom in just by holding your finger, two fingers on the screen and pulling them apart. That will zoom in. And if you want to zoom back out again, you just pinch them together again. Um, there's so many features on this. The web browsing as well is absolutely amazing. You put in a web page, the entire screen comes up on the, uh, the entire page comes up on the screen. You tap where you want to read, and it zooms into that bit immediately. <coughs> Four seconds. Flip it round, and you can do it landscape. There are so many other things I want to tell you about this. The iPod functionality is better than the iPod. Um, it's just an amazing, amazing. It's the greatest phone ever. Bow down, be, behold. Behold the Jesus phone. <laughs> all right, all right, OK, that's enough of the Jesus phone. Excuse my French, bollocks to that. I've got a phone you can actually buy here. It's a Nokia N95. It's a real phone. I call it the Buddha phone um, because it makes me feel all zen because it does lots of fancy stuff. Uh, as you see, it's a double slider, um, so it goes both ways. It likes to swing both ways. That's not the most exciting feature, though, of course. That would probably be built in SatNav. Um, forget having to remember a little Bluetooth dongle that you've got to ring around and you never actually have when you need it. This has GPS built in and mapping software built in as well. So you can see where you are, you can do A to B, whether you're in a car, on foot, whatever. Now, I also have a bit of a message to Steve Jobs. Um, hi Steve, um, hello, 5 megapixels, 2007, 2 megapixels, that's like 2005, dude. Anyway, I'm not going not gonna to lay into the iPhone. Although I am going to mention the fact that this has a proper keypad so that if, like me and, oh, the rest of the world, you like to send text messages, you can easily with the old-fashioned keypad. It's got loads of other cool stuff, not to mention, oh, oh OK, I will, HSDPA, which is like super 3G, um, which, uh, yeah, the iPod is uh, 2.5G. It is, indeed. I um, put it on iPod. Uh, yeah, the iPhone is 2.5G, although there will be a 3G one coming out. And at the moment, it doesn't really matter, I think. You're going to use this uh, in Wi-Fi hotspots, and you're going to use it as a phone and an iPod when you're, when you're wandering around. The fact is, though, if you want to live in the 20th century, use, use the uh, N95. It's a, it's a great phone. It is lovely if you like that kind of old school way of using phones. If, however, you want to embrace the 22nd century, if you want to move into the future, if you want to take a giant leap, the iPhone is where it's at. OK, OK, and enough, enough rhetoric. Let's uh, defer to the real god in this equation, Unazukin. Let's defer. Unazukin, brother, is the Nokia N95 better than the cardboard iPhone? Yeah. That, that's so not fair, man. And we're not talking about the cardboard iPhone, although clearly that's all we'll get hold of for the next nine months. We're talking about the real iPhone. The truth is, the N95 is a great phone, and it's going to be the one that I'll get to tide me over uh, until the iPhone comes out. But as soon as the iPhone arrives, I'm afraid this is being unceremoniously dumped. Until then. <laughs> until then. Good night. <laughs> and good luck. Ha, ha, ha.